T. Quilts and I'm here today to talk about quilt labels and there really is not a rule about quilt labels other than you should have a quilt label and as a minimum on your quilt label you should have the maker's name city and state as well as the date the quilt was completed now you can go a little further with your quilt labels and you can add why you're making a particular quilt who you're making that particular quilt for what city and state they live in you can also add a title to your quilt and i tend to add those extra things onto my quilt just so that i can have a great history of my quilt making years down the line i'm sure our ancestors that made quilts 100 to 150 years ago did not think that their quilts would last as long as they did and there are a lot of quilts out that have great work in them but we have no idea of the maker what era when it um where it was made who made it for what purpose so i just like to keep track of those things for my quilting also quilt labels can add value to a quilt and i'm going to talk about that in a, uh, as we go into this video but first i just want to talk about how to make a label so let's get started i'm just going to point the camera down and i'm going to show you some various different types of labels that I have used in my quilt making. First up, you can just use a plain old piece of muslin. You can make a square or rectangle. You can make a shape that's the same shape as in a quilt. Say you have a quilt that's made with hearts, you can make a heart label. You can make a floral label, it doesn't matter. The main thing is to make a label. You can also take a square and fold it in half where you can just insert the label on two sides and all you have to sew by hand is this one side. I tend to put my labels in a corner of my quilt after it's been quilted and then I do sew two sides. And the only reason I don't use the triangle method is because I add so much to my quilt that that, that type of a label would get really big for me. And I like to have big laddering on my quilts. So in addition to using the muslin, you can also use what's known as an iron-on transfer. You can purchase these at your local craft stores like Joann's and Hobby Lobby, probably at Walmart. And what you do is you use a hot iron and you press this onto your fabric, preferably a light color fabric, and then it will give an image off onto the fabric. And you only have so many uses that you can use these, that you can use this, and then it will get lighter and lighter. But in addition to that, you can also use your, your Sankara markers and use those to darken the lines as well. I also recommend using Sankara markers to write on your quilt blocks because they really are color fast. Now I've done a review on the Tulip Dual Tip markers and some of the markers did not bleed so you can use those at your discretion. If you don't want to use just the plain muslin fabric then you can also buy labels by the yardage and this is just one that I have left from a a batch that I purchased by the yard. They tend to have some decoration on them, quotes. They may or may not fit your particular style of quilt, but sometimes I will buy Halloween labels and then I'll just put them aside for when I make uh, Halloween projects. So that's also an option. Some other ones are like your signature labels that was printed also on yardage. And then you can also color this in if you like and then write your information inside the metal. One way that I like to make quilt labels is by using my computer. I just use plain old Microsoft Word processing software and I can just type on the label anything that I want to type. It doesn't matter how big or small I like it and I can get that done pretty fast. I just, the thing with using your 
printer to print is that you have to have either fabric that's been pre-treated that you can purchase from your quilt store or you have to use bubble jet set and or bubble jet rinse to make it so that your fabric is ink proof so when you wash it it won't wash off another option is to go to your store and purchase those fabric sheets they're already pre-treated companies like timeless treasure electric quilt and june taylor have different brands of sheets that you can use if you're going to use plain muslin and use bubble jet set and or bubble jet rinse when you get ready to run that fabric through your printer you might want to put a piece of freezer paper onto the back where you iron that onto the back to stabilize it and then square your paper up to the size of a piece of paper which for us in the US is eight and a half by eleven. Another thing that I can do with my word processing software is that my labels do not have to be plain. I can make color blocks, fill in the color blocks with text and or a picture of the quilt if I like. One way that I make my labels Is also using electric quilt software sometimes I'll make a quilt and it has a, a historical significance to me and like say a sampler quilt and each block means something in the quilt but if a person is receiving the quilt or seeing the quilt years later they may not know what that particular block mean one of our um, one of our quilt shops here locally had a block of the month called women of influence and so every month we got a block that was based on some famous woman in American history so on the front of my quilt you would never know that those blocks were made for women of influence so what I did was made a mock-up in electric quilt of the front of my quilt and I transferred this layout of my quilt into the word processing program and I added in the text for each block that's on the front of my quilt. Now, something like this, when it's appraised, will also raise the value of your appraisal. So keep that in mind if you're making a quilt that has a lot of significance to it. Another way that I do quilt labels is when I'm working on a round robin quilt. I will make a sheet that I, this is pre-treated fabric that I have attached to the back of a piece of freezer paper and then I just stitched around the outside so that it would not come off of the freezer paper. This actually traveled around to around the USA to different people that worked on this particular quilt. So what I did was I made my own label and I asked them to please label their border, write down their name or any other thoughts they want to add about the particular quilt. And so this is a nice historical account of my round robin quilt. Another way to make quilt labels is by using your embroidery machine. I love using my embroidery machine to make my quilt labels because I know that they're going to be permanent Again, notice as I told you, I always put my quilt label into two cor into a corner of my quilt. And so when I go to do the handwork, I only have to sew down on two sides. And then this is another quilt top where I've done using word processing software. And it's an underground railroad quilt. And they have a lot of quilt codes inside of the quilt so i made pages of labels so that i could tell what each particular block was and so i'll just show you one and so on the front of the quilt i have this particular symbols going on and then it tells you what that symbol means and so I just took pictures of each block as I was making them and uploaded them or imported them into the word processing program and then I typed whatever that particular symbol meant and then I've got a, a historic account of my underground railroad quilt in addition I also then went and tea dyed my sheets because I didn't want them to be white. I wanted them to kind of blend in with my backing fabric. 
So that is it for labels. If you've got any other questions about labels, please leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to help you. See you in my next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.